Here we're going to do problem 674. Um, this is actually a relatively easy problem. The hardest thing about this is trying to visualize what is the beam and then get the loading out of the beam. You know, basically you're designing this um, boat trailer, which is idealized as a beam. It has this cross section. This is kind of a tricky cross section. Actually, you know what I'll probably do here? I might pause here and show you. Uh, how to use a spreadsheet to kind of compute these composite sections. Although this one's not too bad, I could probably... No, actually there's a shortcut. I'll, I'll, do, it. I'll do it a simple way. Maybe I'll do a spreadsheet in another video. Um, and, and you just have to find the maximum stress in this uh, box beam, okay? Um, so the boat is resting at point A and it's basically pinned at B. So you can imagine that really there's um, well, well, let's assume that they're downward. The, the, probably yeah, have to flip, right? This one will probably have to flip. Well, it depends on where it is, but this one might have to flip, so let's assume it's upward. So, these are going to be the forces that are acting on this beam, right? This is the beam we're trying to design. This section here. A to C. This boat really doesn't matter, other than the fact we have to use uh, equilibrium equations on the boat to get the reaction forces. Okay? All right. So this one's got a little bit of like a step zero. We're going to have to do uh, equilibrium on the boat to get the reaction forces, the force at B and the force at A that act on, on the B. Okay? And then we'll go through the usual steps. Then we'll get the bending moment diagram in the beam AC and then we'll have to get the area properties, the eyes in the center of the neutral axis location, you know, the centroid, and then finally put that into the flexure formula. Okay, right, the area properties this is where we want to get I and the maximum C. Okay? Well, this is symmetric, so it'll be the same C either way. Alright, so let's do the step zero. So if we look at the boat, let me try to draw a boat. Here's the boat. So acting on the boat, we've got this force A. And since I drew this going upward, this would actually be a downward force at B. Again, it doesn't really matter which way you draw it. You know, these, these I've drawn here, these are the forces on the beam. So the forces acting on the boat are equal and opposite. And, you know, if B turns out to be in compression, obviously it'll just flip sides. And then here's G. So the boat weighs 2,300 pounds. This distance here is 4 feet. And this distance here is 4 feet as well. Right, it's going, no, no, it's five feet, I'm sorry, it's five feet. It's from here to here is five feet, and then we have one foot between the wheel and the center of gravity. All right, so we know that FA has to equal the 2300 plus FB, and then let's do some moments around A to get FB. So we do sum of moments around A, and that equals um, the weight of the boat is a negative moment, 2300. Its moment arm is 4, and then um, the FB is also going to give me a negative moment, minus FB, and its moment arm is 9, and that has to go to 0. So that gives me the FB, and in fact I did get the wrong sign on it. FB is going to be equal to 
uh, minus 2300 times 4 over 9, which is uh, 1022 pounds, okay, uh, and a minus. So actually, it's actually acting downward. I'm sorry, this is actually, so this is actually acting upward, okay? All right, and then that tells me that the FA, putting this into here, gives me twelve seventy-eight pounds, positive. So it's acting. So actually, the free body diagram on the beam now looks as follows, okay? So here's the actual beam that we're designing. Okay? So we have a unknown reaction force at the trailer hitch, point C. We'll call this force C. And we've got this known force acting at B, right? which you already figured out is actually uh, acting uh, downward. Right? It's, it's actually right? it's, it's actually the upward force on the boat, so it's a compressional force, so it's about here. The X downward, that's at B, and that has a value of 1022 pounds, that's known. We also have an A, another downward force from the boat. That's 1278 pounds acting downward. That's at point A. And then right here at point D, where the wheel force acts up, we have a supporting force of the wheel, FD. I'll draw that up as well. So now I need to get FD and FC on this beam. So this is actually the beam we're going to analyze. This step zero, I'm sorry, this is, we're actually now starting to do step one. This step zero is just to get these two reaction forces of the boat acting on to the trailer. Okay? All right, and we'll put some dimensions on here. This is four feet. This is one foot. This is Wait, what am I doing? I'm sorry, this, I didn't draw this very well. D is back here. D is, excuse me, three feet from A. And then we go another six feet from D to B. So I didn't really draw this to scale. D is actually should be back farther. And then this is another four feet from B to C. Okay, so that's a little sloppy, but those are the force. That's the distances. Okay, so we need to get FD and FC. So again, equilibrium. Let me get another piece of paper, I guess. Okay, so sum of forces in the y direction. That gives me FC plus F. D has to equal the 1278 plus 1022 pounds. That's a force going to equal the, that's, that's 2300. It's the total weight of the boat, right? They have to equal the total weight of the boat. Um, or it better be, right? Otherwise, I screwed up up here. And then let's do some moments around. Uh, Let's do around point C. So we drop out the C and we can get a, an equation that just involves D. Of course, you can pick any one that you want. So if we pick it around, around point C, all right, this uh, force A is a positive moment, 1278, and its moment arm is 10, is 13 feet. Uh, FD produces a negative moment around C, and its moment arm is 10, 10 feet. The 1022 produces a, a positive moment, 
ten twenty two, and its moment arm is four feet, and that's all we got. This has to go to zero, so this gives me that the force at D is um, four times ten twenty two plus thirteen times ten seventy eight divided by ten, which is equal to. Twenty seventy pounds. Okay, and now knowing that we can get that F at C is going to equal twenty three hundred minus twenty seventy, and that's just going to be two hundred and thirty pounds. Okay. So now if we draw the the, fruit, the forces on the beam. Let's try to draw a little more to scale this time. We've got A, and then we go to D, and then we go out to another five feet to B, and then out to C. And we have Twelve seventy eight at A, we have upwards force at D of two hundred I mean two thousand and seventy. These are all pounds. At B I have um, another downward force of ten twenty two pounds. And then at C, we have upward force of 230 pounds, okay? All right, so now we need to compute the bending moment diagram. Uh, this is nice. It's got some point loads, so we can actually kind of do this graphically, I guess. Uh, again, the moments have to vanish at the ends. There's nothing there that, res that you know, it's not built in on either side, and there's no externally applied moment. We're assuming the trailer hitch is pinned, right? So we know that the moment has to vanish at both ends. Let's draw that. Okay, so here's point C, here's B, here's D, and here's A. So this is X, and this is the moment. All right. Now, if you think about it, let's start going from the left hand side. So, if we draw a section through here, right, we draw this cross section, then it'll have a bending moment. The internal bending moment acts clockwise because it's a negative face. And so, this distance here is the length, the total length which is, um, what is the total length? 13 minus x, right? And so you can see that actually uh, this is going to produce a positive moment, right? This one is a negative moment, a positive moment. So this will actually produce a positive moment. It starts here at 0. And it's going to go up. Maybe I'll do it in pencil so I don't screw up too much. I'll try to use a I don't usually do graphical approach, but I'm going to try to be a little more graphical on this one, okay? <laughs> so it'll go up from point C. Right? All these point load, any moment that's a, that arises from a point force is going to have a linear shape to it. And it's going to obviously apply over the entire beam. And it's going to have a slope of um, wait, no, wait, wait, what am I doing? Is it going to be a positive or minus? The slope's 230. 
But yeah, the slope is a minus 2 thirds. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right, which is what I've drawn here. So it has to be increasing, right? So it gets maximum at this point, right? Okay. Then once we, you know, all these sections will be the same, right? It's the same free body diagram until we get past, let's do another color, this point, right? Where we have this free body diagram. Here's the internal moment at this point. So we still have, you know, this slope here, which is the moment caused by this 230, but now we're going to have an additional moment that's being caused by this 1022, and its moment arm is this distance here, which is going to be the distance to this point, which is 9 feet minus x, right? That's 9 feet minus x, so that's the moment arm. All right, so it's going to have a slope of, uh, it's actually going to be a negative moment. Why is it a negative moment? This is actually going to be, now, now I'm just talking about the effect, the moment due to this 1022, like if we just consider superposition. This is uh, producing a negative moment around here, so that means actually the internal reaction moment has to flip the other way to balance that out. So it's going to be a negative moment. So it's going to be going down, and its slope is going to be the 1022. So I actually should have drawn this a lot less, because 230, I'm going to try to draw it to scale a little bit. Let's see if I try to draw it to scale. Let's just redraw this one. Because I'm going to have some slopes that go up to, to 2,000. So 2,000 is kind of my max slope. And that would be about 1,000. So yeah, this would be about, well, I'll exaggerate a little bit. Let's say that's the slope that I get. That's the, that's the minus 230. All right, so added on to that, I'm going to get a slope here. From this one, starts at 0 here, goes that way. That's going to have a slope of um, 1022. Right? And then at this point, we do the same argument. We move sections over here, it's all the same. These two add together. And then we get to this point, and then the, the, the moment has to take into account this one, which is a, give me a positive moment, but its slope is going to be 2,000, so it's going to be like double that slope, so it's roughly something that looks like this. Negative number, that's a positive number, right? That would be hard for you to see. And so you have to consider these things actually added up. Right? So if we draw the let me draw let me draw the the total one in uh, blue, maybe in blue in a while. So from and this is point B, this is point D, and this is point A. So from C to B, we just see, oops, right? That becomes the, 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 diag the, the moment diagram. Just has that small slope of the 230. Then once you get to point B, we have to subtract off the contribution from the 1022 force. So that's going to be a moment that we we'll draw over that. It's just going to follow this line. So I'm, drawing, I'm trying to draw a parallel line to that until we get to point D. So it looks like we should, in fact, get a sign change on the moment. And then, um, Actually, be I need to, it's not going to be parallel. It's actually going to be like a bisector, right? It's actually kind of like a bisector. Actually, I'm going to like this. So if I get this right, 
and then uh, it's going to go up. With a slope of so this one so ah screw this up so this slope here the actual one this slope here is going to be the minus two thirty this slope here of the resultant curve is going to be the minus two thirty plus the ten twenty two so that is going to be a slope of seven ninety two. All right, and then when we get to this point, it's going to be the 792 minus 2070. So that gives me a minus 12, 78. So this is going to go from this point up something like this. Well, then it, I know it goes to zero, right? It has to go to zero. And this one's going to have to have a slope of minus 1278. So the total bending moment diagram looks something like this. Right? Maybe I should draw that a little bigger. Uh, let me just redraw it. Well, that's good enough. Right? We'll just leave it like that. You get the idea. So uh, I got two points here that might be maximal. This one or that one. Okay? Those are the points of interest. So we should probably figure this out. This bending moment here is going to be the 230 because it goes at that slope on this distance, and that distance between B and C is 4 feet. So this is going to be 230 times 4. So this is going to have a positive bending moment of 920. Now we're, we're talking about pound feet here, okay? So we did all the lengths of feet. Now this one, let's see if I can do this correctly. This is going to go at this slope of 1278. It starts at 0, and this distance is um, three feet. So this moment here should be the 1278 three times. So this is actually going to be the greater one. And it kind of looks that way from drawing it. A minus 3834 pound feet. Okay? So this point D is actually going to have the maximum bending moment. Okay? That's what we have to design to. Alright? So again, like I said, uh, the graphical approach is nice. I think it was good back in days where people didn't have such fancy calculators or, or whatever, and, and then they were quite adept at doing things graphically. I think these days, you know, the direct computation approach is, is fine. Um, I think before you start to do the graphical approach, you really have to understand how to draw the free body diagrams because uh, there's lots of sort of assumptions or shortcuts of taking it here. If you follow it and you're comfortable doing the graphical approach, so be it. No problems. But if not, go back and write the equations and do the same process that we've done in the prior examples. You should get the same numbers, okay? But from here, you're going to see that point D is the critical point. That's where the maximum stress is going to occur because that's where the maximum bending stress is going to occur. The ma uh, bending moment, excuse me. All right, so that's step two. Now we're, well, that's step one. Now we have to do the cross-sectional area ones. So let's compute the cross-sectional area. So this is step two, we have to get the area properties. Actually, this one isn't so bad, even though it looks like it's kind of complicated. Um, so you have this open box shape. All right, and this dimension here is the outer dimension is 1.75. This is all in inches. This inner dimension is 1.5. This overall dimension is 3 inches. And this inner dimension here is 1.75 as well. Okay? So you could break this up into four regions, if you will. You can consider the top, the bottom, and then the two sides, and do a composite section like that. Um, since it's symmetric, this one's actually quite easy. We can get the eye just as we would when we considered like a hollow tube. So 
we can get the I of the box beam as if it were solid. A solid 1.75 by 3 inches. And we could subtract off of that the I of the intersection. And the intersection is 1.5 by 1.75. Now, since both of these sections, right, Are, have the same center point. I don't have to do parallel axis there, right? This sec, this cross section here, the hole, has its neutral axis, right? If it were uh, an actual physical element, coincident with the neutral axis of the outer box, and that's going to be coincident with the neutral axis of this one. If this had been skewed somehow, so it wasn't centered, you would then have to do parallel axis to shift the shape and subtract it off. So we just need to subtract this I off of this I, and that'll give me the total I, okay? I'll try to do a video where I get a more complicated, maybe I'll do like a, a, a an L shape or a, or a C channel or a Z channel and try to get this, the, the geometric properties off of a more complicated shape using a spreadsheet, but, but for now we'll just do this because this is pretty easy. So the I of this one is going to be um, 1 12th base times height. The base is 1.75. The height is 3. We're going to cube that. We're going to subtract off of that this I, which is uh, base 1.5 times the height 1.75 cubed. Now, this is all inches, so this is going to give me a result in inch to the fourth, right? So this is I. So this now becomes so this becomes three point nine four inches to the fourth minus. Point six um, seven zero inches to the fourth, and so that equals three point two seven inches to the fourth. That's I. The neutral axis is going to pass right through the center, so that means. The C to this outer fiber is 1.5 inches, and then the C distance to this bottom fiber is equal 1.5 inches. Okay? So we have... Um, so you have the same C in both directions, okay? All right. So let's finish up the problem. We're almost there. We need to now do the third step. We have to find the stress. So the stress max. This is going to occur at point D, where we have that maximum bending moment, which is the... Well, let's, let's be careful about our sign conventions. Minus 3, 8, 3, 4. And actually, it's a minus bending moment. Now, this is... Uh, pound feet, so I have to multiply that by 12 inches in a foot. C, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's look at it at this section, so it's the positive C, so that's 1.5 inches, and then the I is 3.27 inches to the fourth. Okay, so we cancel out. Got inches squared over inches to the fourth, so I get inches to the square below, or a PSI. So, so we get three 
8, 3, 4, 12 times, 5 times, Positive, so this becomes positive twenty one point one uh, K PSI or KS. I don't know. Your book calls KPSI, I'm used to seeing it as KSI. Okay? Thousand PSI. That's the stress, right? So on this top part, it's intention. On the bottom part, it's going to be equal opposite. It's going to be compressional stress. So basically, the max stress you're going to have here is going to be as follows. This is at point D. Here you're going to have 21.1 uh, KSI tension, and then down here you're going to have minus 21. KSI, compression, okay? And those are the maximum stresses.